Triple G. Looked good, man. He looked better than what I was expecting. Um, don't kill me, but in a way, he reminded me of Mayweather. Not necessarily the things he was doing in there, even though he has been practicing the pull counter, right? Floyd did not invent that shit, obviously, but they've definitely been working on that. And it worked. It worked well. But it's, you know, when, when, when a guy reaches, a fighter reaches a certain age and we think he, he's done, right? It's, it, he's going to just, like, that's it. This is his last good performance and, and he's got to go after this. He turns back the clock just a little bit and he turns in a good performance, right? Um, Sheremeta, maybe you disagree, but for me, it was basically Robert Guerrero level, right? Except he was a natural middleweight. He didn't come up from... Whereas Guerrero, you could maybe say, I don't think he was technically better than Sheremeta. He he hit harder, right? He was more experienced, uh, but he was a little guy coming up in weight, blown up... Uh, featherweight or something like that lightweight blown up lightweight let's say but Mayweather you know when he got in the ring with these type of guys just dominated them basically right so that's why I say um, it kind of reminded me of Mayweather because a lot of fighters when they get to you know 38 39 they're done basically right and at that age Mayweather couldn't beat someone like Prime, prime, confident Thurman, in my opinion. Not to say he couldn't, but he just didn't want that kind of a fight. You know what I mean? That young of a fighter or Canelo. Even young Canelo at 155 or whatever it was that Canelo was fighting at at the time, right? Without a dehydration clause and all this other bullshit, right? So Mayweather was no longer a top, top level guy, even though everyone thought he was. But he was still very good and better than your average 36, 7, 8-year-old guy, right? That's all I'm saying. Um, you know, it, you could look at his Maidana performance, right? And you could compare that to Triple G's performance against uh, Derevyanchenko, right? Aggressive guy that comes forward and makes a case for himself winning the fight, right? So that's that's the comparison I'm drawing. A guy that is way past his prime, but he could still turn back the clock a little bit and beat certain level of opponents. Very, very good opponents, if not the, the very best guys in the division, or 168. But, you know, that Golovkin, the Golovkin we saw tonight, <clears throat> he beats just about everybody at 160, uh, and a lot of these so-called top guys at 168. Um, for me anyway but not everybody not everybody he he does lose to somebody in my opinion um, legitimately he um his speed looked really good to me now obviously it's Golovkin and Golovkin has never been known as a very speedy guy but you can tell they've been working on speed timing and quickness uh, there were some instances in there where his combinations looked fast and fluid. His counter right hand looked fluid. And then, then you had those like well-timed, wide left hooks that he's always thrown, right? People say it's slow, and I mean, well, it's just timing. He shows it to you, he waits for the reaction, and then he sits on it or, or steps into it, uh, commits to it, right? So... A lot of boxing fans, you know, they're mesmerized by speed, punching power, and they don't really seem to understand much else besides that. Like some guy called into BBA and his assessment of the fight was he looked slow, right? And whether he looked slow, whether he would have said that guy that he looked slow or fast, to me the criticism would have been the same. Like, that's all you saw. Maybe. 
That's your assessment of the fight. <laughs> oh, but it is what it is. The speed looked good when he used his speed. It looked good, and and in so far as hand speed, he wasn't slowing down. I know. Granted, the fight went what six rounds or something, seven. Uh, but yeah, when he wanted to use his speed, it, it was there. The feet are not what they used to be. Technically, yes, but the foot speed is no longer there. On BDA, some people were talking about head movement because, you know, the commentators pointed it out, so they noticed that Golovkin's always had very good head movement when he used it. Sometimes he didn't use it. Uh, people just don't watch his fights carefully, right? I, I don't know what it is about people they just get brainwashed by the commentary or whatever but if you disagree all i gotta say to you is just go watch the rosado fight go watch the proxa fight go watch the adama fight but mostly the rosado fight you're gonna see a ton of head movement by golovkin ton of head movement it's just that he doesn't always use it because sometimes he just puts his hands up right if your hands are up then why should you move your head i mean i'm not saying you shouldn't right it makes sense to sometimes, but, you know, when you got your hands up, head movement isn't that important anymore, right? You're defending yourself in different ways. So, yeah, I don't, I didn't see any more head movement than, than before. What I did see was a commitment. A very disciplined commitment to defense. Golovkin in the past, and I'm sure this will happen again, or maybe it will, maybe it won't, but sometimes he just wants to get you the fuck out of there, right? And he just throws defense out the window and he just goes for it. Even though he did go for it a little bit in this fight and he did get hit in this fight, he was always, he never just abandoned his defense like he has in the past. So I saw a commitment to, to defense, and it was, you know, keeping your hands up, moving your head, uh, using your feet, and just punching, right? And, yeah, we got to be careful not to blow this performance out of proportion, because um, Sheremeta didn't really have much to offer, even when he was able to land cleanly on Golovkin um, it wasn't that much and he just didn't have the power to really do much to him which is why and Golovkin said basically insinuated that this is what he did I won't say he carried him but he just took his time and wanted to get the rounds in and give the fans a show basically he said as much literally he said that in a post fight interview so Whereas he could have just walked through this guy because he didn't have that much punching power. Again, he was committed to the defense. And that, that made it... Um, because he was reacting to Sheremeta's punches, right? All he had to do, Sheremeta, is throw some punches. Well, it's not that simple. But if he was throwing punches, he wasn't getting knocked out right and I think that's why we didn't get a spectacular knockout or a guy getting hit and pooping his pants and quitting um, but we got a corner stoppage because when Sheremeta threw punches Golovkin was looking to defend instead of just walking through him like against Gill let's say or Steve Rolls for example instead of just walking through the punches just to get the guy out of there he was minding his defense and then look in the counter and, and get off his own punches after transitioning from offense to defense. Um, yeah, the feet, is not, the feet are not as quick as before and Golovkin was in there taking some breathers here and there and resting. Um, so I don't think the stamina is what it was, but it still, it still looks pretty good, at least however long the, the fight went, it looked pretty good. So... I was, I have to say, I was surprised by the performance. He looked better to me. Most notably, again, hand speed, fluidity, 
uh, commitment to defense and relying less on strength and athleticism and more on technical ability and that's yet again why it reminded me a little bit of Mayweather at the tail end of his own career even though uh, technically or or stylistically there aren't a lot of similarities there so Triple G looked good and you know obviously they want the Canelo fight okay they're gonna push for it it doesn't matter to them how old Triple G is they're gonna try to make it happen and if you're Triple G you're taking that fight no matter when right because it's a huge money fight and you're a fighter you want to get your lick back so fuck it just let's just get it over with uh this fight should happen next if Canelo comes through his uh little fixed fight over there his little rigged exhibition Uh, maybe I'm wrong maybe Smith will actually come to win we'll see but yeah provided he does win if he is to fight Triple G at some point just fight him next or never that's all I'm saying basically okay but I'm watching this performance and these new things that Triple G is implementing and I don't think he showed everything he had, everything that he had been working on anyway. Um, and I'm thinking to myself, yeah, Canelo doesn't want to fight this guy. That's that's the feeling I got. But maybe they'll be able to persuade him because, I don't know, he has less clout now or whatever the case may be. Uh, maybe he's a little bit more desperate than ever before. So... If that fight is to happen, let's just get it out the fucking way now or never. But it was a it was a good performance against, you know, a guy that's really untested. Tough dude uh, did his best, but he really had nothing for for Triple G. And Triple G was treated him like this was a serious sparring session for him, basically. Not even that serious. So, yeah. Very good performance, all things considered. And I do think Triple G turned back the clock just a little bit. And this performance has reinvigorated my interest in Triple G going forward. So let's go forward. Thanks for watching.